The Maori, Maori pronunciation, Ma I listen, are the indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand. Maori originated with settlers from eastern Polynesia, who arrived in New Zealand in several waves of canoe voyages some time between 1250 and 1300. Over several centuries in isolation, the Polynesian settlers developed a unique culture, with their own language, a rich mythology, and distinctive crafts and performing arts. Early Maori formed tribal groups based on Eastern Polynesian social customs and organization. Horticulture flourished using plants they introduced. Later, a prominent warrior culture emerged. The arrival of Europeans to New Zealand, starting in the 17th century, brought enormous changes to the Maori way of life. Maori people gradually adopted many aspects of Western society and culture. Initial relations between Maori and Europeans were largely amicable, and with the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840, the two cultures coexisted as part of a new British colony. Rising tensions over disputed land sales led to conflict in the 1860s. Social upheaval, decades of conflict and epidemics of introduced disease took a devastating toll on the Maori population, which fell dramatically. By the start of the 20th century, the Maori population had begun to recover, and efforts have been made to increase their standing in wider New Zealand society and achieve social justice. Traditional Maori culture has thereby enjoyed a significant revival, which was further bolstered by a Maori protest movement that emerged in the 1960s. In the 2013 census, there were approximately 600,000 people in New Zealand identifying as Maori, making up roughly 15% of the national population. They are the second largest ethnic group in New Zealand, after European New Zealanders. Pakeha. In addition, more than 140,000 Maori live in Australia. The Maori language is spoken to some extent by about a fifth of all Maori, representing 3% of the total population. Maori are active in all spheres of New Zealand culture and society, with independent representation in areas such as media, politics and sport. Disproportionate numbers of Maori face significant economic and social obstacles, and generally have lower life expectancies and incomes compared with other New Zealand ethnic groups. They suffer higher levels of crime, health problems, and educational underachievement. A number of socio-economic initiatives have been instigated with the aim of closing the gap between Maori and other New Zealanders. Political and economic redress for historical grievances is also ongoing. See Treaty of Waitangi Claims and Settlements. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> In the Maori language, the word Maori means normal, natural, or ordinary. In legends and oral traditions, the word distinguished ordinary mortal human beings. Tangata Maori from deities and spirits wairua. Likewise, Wai Māori denotes fresh water, as opposed to salt water. There are cognate words in most Polynesian languages, all deriving from Proto-Polynesian asterisk ma a kali, which has the reconstructed meaning true, real, genuine. The spelling of Māori with or without the Macron is inconsistent in general interest English language media in New Zealand, although some newspapers and websites have adopted the standard Maori language spelling i.e., with Macrons. <laughs> naming and self-naming Early visitors from Europe to New Zealand generally referred to the indigenous inhabitants as New Zealanders or as natives. The Maori used the term Maori to describe themselves in a pan-tribal sense. Maori people often use the term Tangata Fanua, literally, people of the land, to identify in a way that expresses their relationship with a particular area of land. A tribe may be the Tangata Fanua in one area, but not in another. The term can also refer to the Maori people as a whole in relation to New Zealand Aotearoa as a whole. The Maori Purposes Act of 1947 required the use of the term. Maori, rather than native, in official usage. The Department of Native Affairs was renamed as the Department of Maori Affairs. Since 1992, it has been known as Te Puni Kokiri, or the Ministry for Maori Development. Before 1974, the government required documented ancestry to determine the legal definition of a Maori person. For example, bloodlines or percentage of Maori ancestry was used to determine whether a person should enroll on the general electoral roll or the separate Maori roll. 
In 1947, the authorities determined that a man who was five-eighths Maori had improperly voted in the general parliamentary electorate of Raglan. The Maori Affairs Amendment Act 1974 changed the definition, allowing individuals to self-identify as to their cultural identity. In matters involving financial benefits provided by the government to people of Maori ethnicity—scholarships, for example, or Waitangi tribunal settlements. Authorities generally require some documentation of ancestry or continuing cultural connection such as acceptance by others as being of the people but no minimum blood requirement exists as determined by the government. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. The most current reliable evidence strongly indicates that the initial settlement of New Zealand occurred around 1280 CE, at the end of the medieval warm period. Previous dating of some Kiori Polynesian rat bones at 50 to 150 has now been shown to have been unreliable. New samples of bone and now also of unequivocally rat gnawed woody seed cases match the 1280 date of the earliest archaeological sites and the beginning of sustained deforestation by humans. Maori oral history describes the arrival of ancestors from Hawaii, the mythical homeland in tropical Polynesia, in large ocean-going waka. Migration accounts vary among tribes (IWI), whose members may identify with several waka in their genealogies. In the last few decades, mitochondrial DNA (mtDNA) research has allowed an estimate to be made of the number of women in the founding population between 50 and 100, evidence from archaeology, linguistics, and physical anthropology indicates that the first settlers came from East Polynesia and became the Maori. Language evolution studies and mtDNA evidence suggest that most Pacific populations originated from Taiwanese Aborigines around 5,200 years ago, suggesting prior migration from the Asian or Chinese mainland. These ancestors moved down through Southeast Asia and Indonesia. Athel Anderson concluded from analysis of mtDNA female and Y chromosome male that the ancestors of Polynesian women came from Taiwan while those of Polynesian men came from New Guinea. Subsequently it was found that 96% of Polynesian mtDNA has an Asian origin, as do one-third of Polynesian Y chromosomes, with the remaining two-thirds being from New Guinea and nearby islands. An Otago University study by Professor Matisu Smith shows that New Zealand was populated from Southern Asia with the mtDNA mainly M branch with some N lineage and Denisovan DNA. Most Polynesians, Maori included, have mtDNA in the B4A1A branch, and the founding population is now known to have been in the hundreds much larger than previously thought. Topic: <laughs> Archaic period, 1280 to 1500. The earliest period of Maori settlement is known as the Archaic Moa Hunter or Colonization period. The eastern Polynesian ancestors of the Maori arrived in a forested land with abundant birdlife, including several now extinct Moa species weighing between 20 kg and 250 kg 550 pounds each. Other species, also now extinct, included a swan, a goose, and the giant host's eagle, which preyed upon the Moa. Marine mammals seals in particular thronged the coasts, with evidence of coastal colonies much further north than those which remain today. Huge numbers of moa bones estimated to be from between 29,000 and 90,000 birds have been located at the mouth of the Waitaki River, between Timaru and Amaru on the east coast of the South Island. Further south, at the mouth of the Shag River Waihamo, evidence suggests that at least 6,000 moa were slaughtered by humans over a relatively short period of time. Archaeology has shown that the Otago region was the node of Maori cultural development during this time, and the majority of archaic settlements were on or within 10 kilometres of the coast. It was common for people to establish small temporary camps far inland for seasonal hunting. Settlements ranged in size from 40 people e.g., Palliser Bay in Wellington to between 300 and 400 people, with 40 buildings such as at the Shag River. The best known and most extensively studied archaic site is at Wairau Bar in the South Island. The site is similar to eastern Polynesian nucleated villages. Radiocarbon dating shows the site was occupied from about 1288 to 1300. Due to tectonic forces, some of the Wairau Bar site is now underwater. 
Work on the Wairau Bar skeletons in 2010 showed that life expectancy was very short, the oldest skeleton being 39 and most people dying in their 20s. Most of the adults showed signs of dietary or infection stress. Anemia and arthritis were common. Infections such as tuberculosis TB may have been present, as the symptoms were present in several skeletons. On average, the adults were taller than other South Pacific people, at 175 centimeters (5 feet 9 in) for males and 161 centimeters (5 feet 3 in) for females. The Archaic period is remarkable for the lack of weapons and fortifications so typical of the later classic Maori, and for its distinctive real necklaces. From this period onward, some 32 species of birds became extinct, either through overpredation by humans and the kiori and curry dog they introduced, repeated burning of the grassland that changed their habitat, or climate cooling, which appears to have occurred from about 1400 to 1450. The early Maori enjoyed a rich, varied diet of birds, fish, seals and shellfish. Moa were also an important source of meat. According to Professor Alan Cooper, the people slaughtered to extinction most of the various lost species within 100 years. Work by Helen Leach shows that Maori were using about 36 different food plants, although many required detoxification and long periods 12 to 24 hours of cooking. D. Sutton's research on early Maori fertility found that first pregnancy occurred at about 20 years and the mean number of births was low, compared with other Neolithic societies. The low number of births may have been due to the very low average life expectancy of 31 to 32 years. Analysis of skeletons at Wairau Bar showed signs of a hard life, with many having had broken bones that had healed. This suggests that the people ate a balanced diet and enjoyed a supportive community that had the resources to support severely injured family members. Topic: <laughs> Classic Period 1500 to 1642. The cooling of the climate, confirmed by a detailed tree ring study near Hokitika, shows a significant, sudden and long-lasting cooler period from 1500. This coincided with a series of massive earthquakes in the South Island Alpine Fault, a major earthquake in 1460 in the Wellington area, tsunamis that destroyed many coastal settlements, and the extinction of the moa and other food species. These were likely factors that led to sweeping changes in the Maori culture, which developed into the classic period that was in place at the time of European contact. This period is characterized by finely made pounamu greenstone weapons and ornaments, elaborately carved canoes. A tradition that was later extended to and continued in elaborately carved meeting houses called farinui, and a fierce warrior culture. They developed hillforts known as pa, practiced cannibalism, and built some of the largest war canoes ever. Around the year 1500, a group of Maori migrated east to the Chatham Islands, where, by adapting to the local climate and the availability of resources, they developed into a people known as the Moriori, related to but distinct from the Maori of mainland New Zealand. A notable feature of Moriori culture was an emphasis on pacifism. When a party of invading North Taranaki Maori arrived in 1835, few of the estimated Moriori population of 2000 survived, they were killed outright and many were enslaved. The largest battle ever fought in New Zealand, the Battle of Hingakaka, occurred around 1780-90, south of Oaupo on a ridge near Lake Ingaroto. The battle was fought between about 7,000 warriors from a Taranaki-led force and a much smaller Waikato force under the leadership of Te Rauingaonga. Topic. Early European contact 1642 European settlement of New Zealand occurred in relatively recent historical times. New Zealand historian Michael King in The Penguin History of New Zealand describes the Maori as the last major human community on earth untouched and unaffected by the wider world. Early European explorers, including Abel Tasman who arrived in 1642 and Captain James Cook who first visited in 1769, recorded their impressions of Maori. Initial contact between Maori and Europeans proved problematic and sometimes fatal, with several accounts of Europeans being cannibalized. From the 1780s, Maori encountered European and American sealers and whalers, some Maori crewed on the foreign ships, with many crewing on whaling and sealing ships that operated in New Zealand waters. Some of the South Island crews were almost totally Maori. 
Between 1800 and 1820, there were 65 sealing voyages and 106 whaling voyages to New Zealand, mainly from Britain and Australia. A trickle of escaped convicts from Australia and deserters from visiting ships, as well as early Christian missionaries, also exposed the indigenous population to outside influences. In the Boyd Massacre in 1809, Maori took hostage and killed 66 members of the crew and passengers of the sailing ship Boyd in apparent revenge for the captain whipping the son of a Maori chief. Given accounts of cannibalism in this attack, shipping companies and missionaries kept their distance, significantly reducing their contact with the Maori for several years. The runaways were of various standing within Maori society, ranging from slaves to high ranking advisors. Some runaways remained little more than prisoners, while others abandoned European culture and identified as Maori. These Europeans, gone native, became known as Pakeha Maori. Many Maori valued them as a means to acquire European knowledge and technology, particularly firearms. When Firia Pomari II led a war party against Titori in 1838, he had 131 Europeans among his warriors. Frederick Edward Maining, an early settler, wrote two lively accounts of life in these times, which have become classics of New Zealand literature, Old New Zealand and History of the War in the North of New Zealand against the Chief Heke. European settlement of New Zealand increased steadily. By 1839, estimates placed the number of Europeans living among the Maori as high as 2,000. Two thirds lived in the North Island, especially in the Northland Peninsula. Contact with Europeans led to a sharing of concepts. The Maori language was first written down by Thomas Kendall in 1815, in A Korau no New Zealand. This was followed five years later by A Grammar and Vocabulary of the New Zealand Language, compiled by Professor Samuel Lee and aided by Kendall, Waikato Maori and the Chief Hongi Hika, on a visit to England in 1820. Maori quickly adopted writing as a means of sharing ideas, and many of their oral stories and poems were converted to the written form. Between February 1835 and January 1840, William Colenso printed 74,000 Maori language booklets from his press at Pahia. In 1843, the government distributed free gazettes to Maori called Ko Te Kariri o Nui Tirani. These contained information about law and crimes, with explanations and remarks about European customs, and were designed to pass on official information to Maori and to encourage the idea that Pakeha and Maori were contracted together under the Treaty of Waitangi. Between 1805 and 1840, the acquisition of muskets by tribes in close contact with European visitors upset the balance of power among Maori tribes. This led to a period of bloody inter-tribal warfare known as the Musket Wars, which resulted in the decimation of several tribes and the driving of others from their traditional territory. It has been estimated that during this period the Maori population dropped from about 100,000 in 1800 to between 50,000 and 80,000 by the war's end in 1843. The 1850s were a decade of relative stability and economic growth for Maori. The picture is confused by uncertainty over how or if Pakeha Maori were counted, and the severe dislocation of many of the less powerful Iwi and Hapu subtribes during the wars. The smashing of normal society by the four decades of wars and the driving of peaceful tribes from their productive Tarangawaiwai, such as the Moriori in the Chatham Islands by invading forces from North Taranaki, had a catastrophic effect on these conquered tribes. At the same time, the Maori suffered high mortality rates for new Eurasian infectious diseases, such as influenza, smallpox and measles, which killed an unknown number of Maori, estimates vary between 10 and 50%. The spread of epidemics resulted largely from the Maori lacking acquired immunity to the new diseases. A huge influx of European settlers in the 1870s increased contact among many of the indigenous people with the newcomers. Te Rangi Hiroa documents an epidemic caused by a respiratory disease that Maori called Rifariwa. It decimated populations in the early 19th century and spread with extraordinary virulence throughout the North Island and even to the south. Measles, typhoid, scarlet fever, whooping cough and almost everything, except plague and sleeping sickness, have taken their toll of Maori dead." Economic changes also took a toll, migration of Maori workers into unhealthy swamplands to produce and export flax led to further mortality. <laughs> Treaty with the British Crown 1840. 
With increasing Christian missionary activity and growing European settlement in the 1830s, and with growing lawlessness in New Zealand, the British Crown acceded to repeated requests from missionaries and some chiefs to intervene. Some freewheeling escaped convicts and seamen, as well as gunrunners and Americans actively worked against the British government by spreading rumours amongst the Maori that the government would oppress and mistreat them. Tamati Waka Nene, a pro-government chief, was angry that the government had not taken active steps to stop gunrunners selling weapons to rebels in Hokianga. In addition, France appeared to be showing interest in acquiring New Zealand to add to its stake in Polynesia. British immigrants believed that the French Catholic missionaries were spreading anti-British feeling. All of the chiefs who spoke against the treaty on 5 February 1840 were Catholic. Years after the treaty was signed, Bishop Pompilier admitted that all the Catholic chiefs and especially Rua, had consulted him for advice. Ultimately, the British government sent Royal Navy Captain William Hobson with instructions to negotiate a treaty between the British Crown and the people of New Zealand. Soon after arrival in New Zealand in February 1840, Hobson negotiated a treaty with North Island chiefs, later to become known as the Treaty of Waitangi. In the end, 500 tribal chiefs and a small number of Europeans signed the treaty, while some chiefs—such as Te Werofero in Waikato—refused to sign. The treaty gave Maori the rights of British subjects and guaranteed Maori property rights and tribal autonomy. In return for accepting British sovereignty, considerable dispute continues over aspects of the Treaty of Waitangi. The original treaty was written mainly by Busby and translated into Maori by Henry Williams, who was moderately proficient in Maori, and his son William, who was more skilled. They were handicapped by their imperfect Maori and the lack of exactly similar words in Maori, as well as by deep differences among the peoples on concepts of property rights and sovereignty, for example. At Waitangi the chiefs signed the Maori translation. Topic. Land disputes and conflict Despite conflicting interpretations of the provisions of the Treaty of Waitangi, relations between Maori and Europeans during the early colonial period were largely peaceful. Many Maori groups set up substantial businesses, supplying food and other products for domestic and overseas markets. Among the early European settlers who learnt the Maori language and recorded Maori mythology, George Grey, Governor of New Zealand from 1845 to 1855 and 1861 to 1868, stands out. However, rising tensions over disputed land purchases and attempts by Maori in the Waikato to establish what some saw as a rival to the British system of royalty led to the New Zealand Wars in the 1860s. These conflicts started when rebel Maori attacked isolated settlers in Taranaki but were fought mainly between Crown troops from both Britain and new regiments raised in Australia, aided by settlers and some allied Maori known as Kupapa and numerous Maori groups opposed to the disputed land sales, including some Waikato Maori. While these conflicts resulted in few Maori compared to the earlier musket wars or European deaths, the colonial government confiscated tracts of tribal land as punishment for what were called rebellions. In some cases the government confiscated land from tribes that had taken no part in the war, although this was almost immediately returned. Some of the confiscated land was returned to both Kupapa and rebel Maori. Several minor conflicts also arose after the wars, including the incident at Parihaka in 1881 and the Dog Tax War from 1897 to 98. The Native Land Acts of 1862 and 1865 established the Native Land Court, which was intended to transfer Maori land from communal ownership into individual household title as a means to assimilation and to facilitate greater sales to European immigrants. Maori land under individual title became available to be sold to the colonial government or to settlers in private sales. Between 1840 and 1890, Maori sold 95% of their land, 63 million of 66 million acres, 270,000 square kilometers in 1890. In total 4% of this was confiscated land, although about a quarter of this was returned. 300,000 acres was returned to Kupapa Maori mainly in the lower Waikato River basin area. Individual Maori titleholders received considerable capital from these land sales, with some lower Waikato chiefs being given £1,000 each. Disputes later arose over whether or not promised compensation in some sales was fully delivered. 
Some claim that later, the selling off of Maori land and the lack of appropriate skills hampered Maori participation in developing the New Zealand economy, eventually diminishing the capacity of many Maori to sustain themselves. The Maori MP Henare Kaihau, from Waiuku, who was executive head of the King movement, worked alongside King Mahuta to sell land to the government. At that time the King sold 185,000 acres per year. In 1910 the Maori Land Conference at Waihi discussed selling a further 600,000 acres. King Mahuta had been successful in getting restitution for some blocks of land previously confiscated, and these were returned to the king in his name. Henare Kaihau invested all the money £50,000 in an Auckland land company which collapsed, all £50,000 of the Kingatanga money was lost. In 1884 King Tafiao withdrew money from the Kingatanga Bank, Te Pio Aotearoa to travel to London to see Queen Victoria to try and persuade her to honour the treaty between their peoples. He did not get past the Secretary of State for the Colonies, who said it was a New Zealand problem. Returning to New Zealand, the Premier Robert Stout insisted that all events happening before 1863 were the responsibility of the imperial government. By 1891, Maori comprised just 10% of the population but still owned 17% of the land, although much of it was of poor quality. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Decline and Revival. By the late 19th century a widespread belief existed amongst both Pakeha and Maori that the Maori population would cease to exist as a separate race or culture, and become assimilated into the European population. In 1840, New Zealand had a Maori population of about 50,000 to 70,000 and only about 2,000 Europeans. By 1860 the Europeans had increased to 50,000. The Maori population had declined to 37,520 in the 1871 census, although Te Rangi Hiroa Sir Peter Buck believed this figure was too low. The figure was 42,113 in the 1896 census, by which time Europeans numbered more than 700,000. Professor Ian Poole noticed that as late as 1890, 40% of all female Maori children who were born died before the age of one, a much higher rate than for males. The decline of the Maori population did not continue, it stabilized and began to recover. By 1936, the Maori figure was 82,326, although the sudden rise in the 1930s was probably due to the introduction of the family benefit minus payable only when a birth was registered, according to Professor Poole. Despite a substantial level of intermarriage between the Maori and European populations, many ethnic Maori retained their cultural identity. A number of discourses developed as to the meaning of Maori and to who counted as Maori or not. The Parliament instituted four Maori seats in 1867, giving all Maori men universal suffrage, twelve years ahead of their European New Zealand counterparts. Until the 1879 general elections, men had to satisfy property requirements of landowning or rental payments to qualify as voters. New Zealand was thus the first neo-European nation in the world to give the vote to its indigenous people. While the Maori seats encouraged Maori participation in politics, the relative size of the Maori population of the time vis a vis Pakeha would have warranted approximately 15 seats. From the late 19th century, successful Maori politicians such as James Carroll, Aparana Nata, Te Rangi Hiroa and Maui Pomari, were influential in politics. At one point Carroll became acting prime minister. The group, known as the Young Maori Party, cut across voting blocks in parliament and aimed to revitalize the Maori people after the devastation of the previous century. They believed the future path called for a degree of assimilation, with Maori adopting European practices such as Western medicine and education, especially learning English. Nada acted as a major force behind the revival of arts such as kapa haka and carving. He also enacted a program of land development, which helped many IWI retain and develop their land. Nada became very close to Te Puea, the Waikato Kingite leader, who was supported by the government in her attempt to improve living conditions for Waikato. Nada transferred four blocks of land to Te Puea and her husband and arranged extensive government grants and loans. Nada sacked the Pakeha farm development officer and replaced him with Te Puea. He arranged for her to have a car to travel around the various farms. Te Puea's husband was also given a large farm at Tikiteri near Rotorua. The public, media and parliament became alarmed at the flow of funds from government to Te Puea during the recession. 
A royal commission was held in 1934 that found Nada guilty of maladministration and misappropriation of funds to the value of £500,000. Nada was forced to resign. During the First World War, a Maori pioneer force was taken to Egypt but quickly was turned into a successful combat infantry battalion. In the last years of the war, it was known as the Maori Battalion. It mainly comprised Te Arawa, Te Itanga a Mahaki, Te Itanga a Hawiti, Nati Poru, and Nati Kahungan, and later many Cook Islanders. The Waikato and Taranaki tribes refused to enlist or be conscripted. Maori were badly hit by the 1918 influenza epidemic when the Maori battalion returned from the Western Front. The death rate from influenza for Maori was 4.5 times higher than for Pakeha. Many Maori, especially in the Waikato, were very reluctant to visit a doctor and went to a hospital only when the patient was nearly dead. To cope with isolation, Waikato Maori, under Te Puea's leadership, increasingly returned to the old Pai Marir cult of the 1860s, until 1893, 53 years after the Treaty of Waitangi, Maori did not pay tax on land holdings. In 1893 a very light tax was payable only on leasehold land, and it was not till 1917 that Maori were required to pay a heavier tax equal to half that paid by other New Zealanders. During the Second World War, the government decided to exempt Maori from the conscription that applied to other citizens. The Maori volunteered in large numbers, forming the 28th or Maori Battalion, which performed creditably, notably in Crete, North Africa and Italy. Altogether 16,000 Maori took part in the war. Maori, including Cook Islanders, made up 12% of the total New Zealand force. 3,600 served in the Maori Battalion, the remainder serving in artillery, pioneers, home guard, infantry, air force, and navy. Topic: Recent history, 1960s present. Since the 1960s, Maoritum has undergone a cultural revival concurrent with activism for social justice and a protest movement. Government recognition of the growing political power of Maori and political activism have led to limited redress for confiscation of land and for the violation of other property rights. In 1975 the Crown set up the Waitangi Tribunal, a body with the powers of a commission of enquiry, to investigate and make recommendations on such issues, but it cannot make binding rulings. The government need not accept the findings of the Waitangi Tribunal, and has rejected some of them. Since 1976, people of Maori descent may choose to enroll on either the general or Maori roll, and vote in either the Maori only or general electorates, but not both. During the 1990s and 2000s, the government negotiated with Maori to provide redress for breaches by the Crown of the Guarantees set out in the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. By 2006, the government had provided over $900 million in settlements, much of it in the form of land deals. The largest settlement, signed on 25 June 2008 with seven Maori IWI, transferred nine large tracts of forested land to Maori control. As a result of the redress paid to many IWI, Maori now have significant interests in the fishing and forestry industries. There is a growing Maori leadership who are using the treaty settlements as an investment platform for economic development. Despite a growing acceptance of Maori culture in wider New Zealand society, the settlements have generated controversy on both sides. Some Maori have complained that the settlements occur at a level of between 1 and 2.5 cents on the dollar of the value of the confiscated lands. Conversely, some non Maori denounce the settlements and socio economic initiatives as amounting to race based preferential treatment. Both of these sentiments were expressed during the New Zealand foreshore and seabed controversy in 2004. Topic: <inaudible> Demographics. In the 2013 census, 598,605 people identified as being part of the Maori ethnic group, accounting for 14.9% of the New Zealand population, while 668,724 people claimed Maori descent. Of those identifying as Maori, 278,199 people identified as of sole Maori ethnicity while 260,229 identified as of both European and Maori ethnicity, due to the high rate of intermarriage between the two cultures. Under the Maori Affairs Amendment Act 1974, a Maori is defined as a person of the Maori race of New Zealand, and includes any descendant of such a person. 
According to the 2013 census, the largest IWI by population is Napuhi followed by Nati Poru Gai Tahu and Waikato However, over 110,000 people of Maori descent could not identify their IWI. Outside of New Zealand, a large Maori population exists in Australia, estimated at 155,000 in 2011. The Maori Party has suggested a special seat should be created in the New Zealand Parliament representing Maori in Australia. Smaller communities also exist in the United Kingdom, approximately 8,000, the United States, up to 3,500, and Canada, approximately 1,000. Topic Culture Topic. Traditional culture The ancestors of the Maori arrived from eastern Polynesia during the 13th century, bringing with them Polynesian cultural customs and beliefs. Early European researchers, such as Julius von Host, a geologist, incorrectly interpreted archaeological remains as belonging to a pre Maori Paleolithic people. Later researchers, notably Percy Smith, magnified such theories into an elaborate scenario with a series of sharply defined cultural stages which had Maori arriving in a great fleet in 1350 and replacing the so called Moa Hunter culture with a classical Maori culture based on horticulture. The development of Maori material culture has been similarly delineated by the Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tongariwa into cultural periods, from the earlier Na Kakano stage to the later Te Tipunga period, before the classic period of Maori history. However, the archaeological record indicates a gradual evolution of a Neolithic culture that varied in pace and extent according to local resources and conditions. In the course of a few centuries, the growing population led to competition for resources and an increase in warfare. The archaeological record reveals an increased frequency of fortified pa, although debate continues about the amount of conflict. Various systems arose which aimed to conserve resources, most of these, such as tapu and rahui, used religious or supernatural threats to discourage people from taking species at particular seasons or from specified areas. Warfare between tribes was common, generally over land conflicts or to restore mana. Fighting was carried out between hapu. Although not practiced during times of peace, Maori would sometimes eat their conquered enemies. As Maori continued in geographic isolation, performing arts such as the haka developed from their Polynesian roots, as did carving and weaving. Regional dialects arose, with differences in vocabulary and in the pronunciation of some words. In 1819 two young northern chiefs, Tuai and Titere, who had learned to speak and write English, went to London, where they met the language expert Samuel Lee. They stayed with a school teacher, Hall, who they told that even in northern New Zealand there were different languages and dialects. The language retained enough similarities to other eastern Polynesian languages, to the point where Tupaya, the Tahitian navigator on James Cook's first voyage in the region acted as an interpreter between Maori and the crew of the Endeavour. Topic. Belief and religion Traditional Maori beliefs have their origins in Polynesian culture. Many stories from Maori mythology are analogous with stories across the Pacific Ocean. Polynesian concepts such as tapu sacred, noa non -sacred, mana authority, prestige, and wairua spirit governed everyday Maori living. These practices remained until the arrival of Europeans, when much of Maori religion and mythology was supplanted by Christianity. Today, Maori tend to be followers of Presbyterianism, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Mormons, or Maori Christian groups such as Ratana and Ringatu, but with Catholic, Anglican and Methodist groupings also prominent. Islam is estimated as the fastest growing religion among Maori, yet Maori Muslims constitute a very small proportion of Maori. At the 2013 New Zealand census, 8.8% .8 of Maori were affiliated with Maori Christian denominations and 39.6% with other Christian denominations, 46.3% of Maori claimed no religion. Proportions of Christian and irreligious Maori are comparable with European New Zealanders. Topic. Performing arts Kappa Haka literally, Haka team, 
is a traditional Maori performance art, encompassing many forms, that is still popular today. It includes haka posture dance, poi dance accompanied by song and rhythmic movements of the poi, a light ball on a string, waiata ringa action songs, and waiata korua traditional chants. From the early 20th century kappa haka concert parties began touring overseas. Since 1972 there has been a regular competition, the Te Matatini National Festival, organized by the Aotearoa Traditional Maori Performing Arts Society. Maori from different regions send representative groups to compete in the biennial competition. There are also Kappa Haka groups in schools, tertiary institutions and workplaces. It is also performed at tourist venues across the country. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Literature and Media. Like other cultures, oral folklore was used by Maori to preserve their stories and beliefs across many centuries. In the 19th century, European-style literacy was brought to the Maori, which led to Maori history documentation in books, novels and later television. Maori language use began to decline in the 20th century with English as the language through which Maori literature became widespread. Notable Maori novelists include Patricia Grace, Witi Ihamira and Alan Duff. Once Were Warriors, a 1994 film adapted from a 1990 novel of the same name by Alan Duff, brought the plight of some urban Maori to a wide audience. It was the highest grossing film in New Zealand until 2006, and received international acclaim, winning several international film prizes. While some Maori feared that viewers would consider the violent male characters an accurate portrayal of Maori men, most critics praised it as exposing the raw side of domestic violence. Some Maori opinion, particularly feminist, welcomed the debate on domestic violence that the film enabled. Well known Maori actors and actresses include Temuera Morrison, Cliff Curtis, Lawrence McCore, Manu Bennett, and Keisha Castle Hughes. They are in films like Whale Rider, Star Wars, Episode III, Revenge of the Sith, The Matrix, King Kong, The River Queen, The Lord of the Rings, Rapa Nui, and others, and famous television series like Xena, Warrior Princess, Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, The Lost World and Spartacus, Blood and Sand. In most cases their roles in Hollywood productions have them portraying ethnic groups other than Maori. Topic. Sport. Maori participate fully in New Zealand's sporting culture, and are well represented in rugby union, rugby league and netball teams at all levels. The New Zealand national rugby union team performs a haka, a traditional Maori challenge, before international matches. As well as participation in national sports teams, there are Maori rugby union, rugby league and cricket representative teams that play in international competitions. At the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, 41 of the 199 competitors were of Maori descent in the New Zealand delegation, with the Rugby 7 squads alone having 17 Maori competitors out of 24. There were also three competitors of Maori descent in the Australian delegation, Ki O Rahi and Tapawai are two sports of Maori origin. Ki O Rahi got an unexpected boost when McDonald's chose it to represent New Zealand. Waka ama outrigger canoeing is also popular with Maori. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Language. From about 1890, Maori members of parliament realized the importance of English literacy to Maori and insisted that all Maori children be taught in English. Missionaries, who still ran many Maori schools, had been teaching exclusively in Maori, but the Maori MPs insisted this should stop. However attendance at school for many Maori was intermittent. The Maori language, also known as Te Reo Maori pronounced ma -oi, te -io ma -oi, or simply Te Reo, the language, has the status of an official language. Linguists classify it within the Eastern Polynesian languages as being closely related to Cook Islands Maori, Tuamotuan and Tahitian. Before European contact Maori did not have a written language and Important information such as Fukapapa was memorized and passed down verbally through the generations. Maori were familiar with the concept of maps and when interacting with missionaries in 1815 could draw accurate maps of their row IWI boundaries, onto paper, that were the equal of European maps. 
Missionaries surmised that Maori had traditionally drawn maps on sand or other natural materials. In many areas of New Zealand, Maori lost its role as a living community language used by significant numbers of people in the post war years. In tandem with calls for sovereignty and for the righting of social injustices from the 1970s onwards, New Zealand schools now teach Maori culture and language as an option, and preschool Kohanga Reo language nests have started, which teach Tamariki young children exclusively in Maori. These now extend right through secondary schools most preschool centers teach basics such as colors, numerals, and greetings in Maori songs and chants. Maori Television, a government funded channel committed to broadcasting primarily in Te Reo, began in March 2004. The 1996 census reported 160,000 Maori speakers. At the time of the 2013 census 125,352 Maori reported a conversational level of proficiency. Topic. Society Topic. Historical development Polynesian settlers in New Zealand developed a distinct society over several hundred years. Social groups were tribal, with no unified society or single Maori identity until after the arrival of Europeans. Nevertheless, common elements could be found in all Maori groups in pre-European New Zealand, including a shared Polynesian heritage, a common basic language, familial associations, traditions of warfare, and similar mythologies and religious beliefs. Most Maori lived in villages, which were inhabited by several fano, extended families, who collectively formed a hapu, clan or subtribe. Members of a hapu cooperated with food production, gathering resources, raising families and defense. Maori society across New Zealand was broadly stratified into three classes of people, rangadira, chiefs and ruling families, tutua, commoners, and mokai, slaves. Tohunga also held special standing in their communities as specialists of revered arts, skills and esoteric knowledge, shared ancestry, intermarriage and trade strengthened relationships between different groups. Many hapu with mutually recognized shared ancestry formed IWI, or tribes, which were the largest social unit in Maori society. Hapu and IWI often united for expeditions to gather food and resources, or in times of conflict. In contrast, warfare developed as an integral part of traditional life, as different groups competed for food and resources, settled personal disputes, and sought to increase their prestige and authority. The arrival of Europeans to New Zealand dates back to the 17th century, although it was not until the expeditions of James Cook over a hundred years later that any meaningful interactions occurred between Europeans and Maori. For Maori, the new arrivals brought opportunities for trade, which many groups embraced eagerly. Early European settlers introduced tools, weapons, clothing and foods to Maori across New Zealand, in exchange for resources, land and labour. Maori began selectively adopting elements of Western society during the 19th century, including European clothing and food, and later Western education, religion and architecture, but as the 19th century wore on, relations between European colonial settlers and different Maori groups became increasingly strained. Tensions led to conflict in the 1860s, and the confiscation of millions of acres of Maori land. Significant amounts of land were also purchased by the colonial government and later through the native land court. 20th century By the start of the 20th century, a greater awareness had emerged of a unified Maori identity, particularly in comparison to Pakeha, who now overwhelmingly outnumbered the Maori as a whole. Maori and Pakeha societies remained largely separate, socially, culturally, economically and geographically—for much of the 19th and early 20th centuries. The key reason for this was that Maori remained almost exclusively a rural population, whereas increasingly the European population was urban especially after 1900. Nevertheless, Maori groups continued to engage with the government and in legal processes to increase their standing in and ultimately further their incorporation into wider New Zealand society. The main point of contact with the government were the four Maori members of parliament. Many Maori migrated to larger rural towns and cities during the Depression and post-World War II periods in search of employment, leaving rural communities depleted and disconnecting many urban Maori from their traditional social controls and tribal homelands. 
Yet while standards of living improved among Maori, they continued to lag behind Pakeha in areas such as health, income, skilled employment and access to higher levels of education. Maori leaders and government policymakers alike struggled to deal with social issues stemming from increased urban migration, including a shortage of housing and jobs, and a rise in urban crime, poverty, and health problems. In regards to housing, a 1961 census revealed significant differences in the living conditions of Maori and Europeans. That year, out of all the unshared non Maori private dwellings in New Zealand, 96.8% had a bath or shower, 94.1% a hot water service, 88.7% a flush toilet, 81.6% a refrigerator, and 78.6% an electric washing machine. By contrast, for all unshared Maori private dwellings that same year, 76.8% had a bath or shower, 68.9% a hot water service, 55.8% a refrigerator, 54.1% a flush toilet, and 47% an electric washing machine. While the arrival of Europeans had a profound impact on the Maori way of life, many aspects of traditional society have survived into the 21st century. Maori participate fully in all spheres of New Zealand culture and society, leading largely Western lifestyles while also maintaining their own cultural and social customs. The traditional social strata of Rangatira, Tutua and Mokai have all but disappeared from Maori society, while the roles of Tohunga and Kaumatua are still present. Traditional kinship ties are also actively maintained, and the Fano in particular remains an integral part of Maori life. Marae, Hapu and IWI Maori society at a local level is particularly visible at the Marae. Formerly the central meeting spaces in traditional villages, Marae today usually comprise a group of buildings around an open space, that frequently host events such as weddings, funerals, church services and other large gatherings, with traditional protocol and etiquette usually observed. They also serve as the base of one or sometimes several hapu. Most Maori affiliate with one or more IWI and hapu, based on genealogical descent whakapapa. IWI vary in size, from a few hundred members to over 100,000 in the case of Napuhi. Many people do not live in their traditional tribal regions as a result of urban migration. IWI are usually governed by runanga governing councils or trust boards which represent the IWI in consultations and negotiations with the New Zealand government. Runanga also manage tribal assets and spearhead health, education, economic and social initiatives to help IWI members. Topic: <laughs> Socioeconomic challenges. Maori on average have fewer assets than the rest of the population, and run greater risks of many negative economic and social outcomes. Over 50% of Maori live in areas in the three highest deprivation deciles, compared with 24% of the rest of the population. Although Maori make up only 14% of the population, they make up almost 50% of the prison population. Maori have higher unemployment rates than other cultures resident in New Zealand. Maori have higher numbers of suicides than non-Maori. Only 47% of Maori school leavers finish school with qualifications higher than NCEA Level 1, compared to 74% European, 87% Asian. Although New Zealand rates vary well globally in the PISA rankings that compare national performance in reading, science and maths. Once you disaggregate the PISA scores, Pakeha students are second in the world and Maori are 34th. Maori suffer more health problems, including higher levels of alcohol and drug abuse, smoking and obesity. Less frequent use of healthcare services mean that late diagnosis and treatment intervention lead to higher levels of morbidity and mortality in many manageable conditions, such as cervical cancer, diabetes per head of population than non-Maori. Although Maori life expectancy rates have increased dramatically in the last 50 years, they still have considerably lower life expectancies compared to New Zealanders of European ancestry. In 2004, Maori males lived 69.0 years versus non Maori males 77.2 years, Maori females 73.2 years versus non Maori females 81.9 years. 
This gap had narrowed by 2013 to 72.8 years for men and 76.5 years for women, compared to 80.2 years for non-Maori men and 83.7 years for non-Maori women. Also, a recent study by the New Zealand Family Violence Clearinghouse showed that Maori women and children are more likely to experience domestic violence than any other ethnic group. Topic. Race relations The status of Maori as the indigenous people of New Zealand is recognised in New Zealand law by the term Tangata Whenua lit. People of the land which identifies the traditional connection between Māori and a given area of land. Māori as a whole can be considered as Tangata Whenua of New Zealand entirely, individual IWI are recognised as Tangata Whenua for areas of New Zealand in which they are traditionally based, while Hapu are Tangata Whenua within their marae. New Zealand law periodically requires consultation between the government and Tangata Whenua, for example, during major land development projects. This usually takes the form of negotiations between local or national government and the runanga of one or more relevant IWI, although the government generally decides which if any, concerns are acted upon. Maori issues are a prominent feature of race relations in New Zealand. Historically, many Pakeha viewed race relations in their country as being the best in the world. A view that prevailed until Maori urban migration in the mid-20th century brought cultural and socio-economic differences to wider attention. Maori protest movements grew significantly in the 1960s and 1970s seeking redress for past grievances, particularly in regard to land rights. Successive governments have responded by enacting affirmative action programs, funding cultural rejuvenation initiatives and negotiating tribal settlements for past breaches of the Treaty of Waitangi. Further efforts have focused on cultural preservation and reducing socio-economic disparity. Nevertheless, race relations remains a contentious issue in New Zealand society. Maori advocates continue to push for further redress claiming that their concerns are being marginalised or ignored. A 2007 Department of Corrections report found that Maori are disproportionately represented in the criminal justice system not only because they commit more crimes but also because they face prejudice at many levels. A number of studies have shown evidence of greater likelihood, associated only with ethnicity, for Maori offenders to have police contact, be charged, lack legal representation, not be granted bail, plead guilty, be convicted, be sentenced to non-monetary penalties, and be denied release to home detention." Conversely, critics denounce the scale of assistance given to Maori as amounting to preferential treatment for a select group of people based on race. Both sentiments were highlighted during the foreshore and seabed controversy in 2004, in which the New Zealand government claimed sole ownership of the New Zealand foreshore and seabed, over the objections of Maori groups who were seeking customary title. Commerce The New Zealand Law Commission has started a project to develop a legal framework for Maori who want to manage communal resources and responsibilities. The voluntary system proposes an alternative to existing companies, incorporations, and trusts in which tribes and hapu and other groupings can interact with the legal system. The foreshadowed legislation, under the proposed name of the Waka Umanga Maori Corporations Act, would provide a model adaptable to suit the needs of individual IWI. At the end of 2009, the proposed legislation was awaiting a second hearing. Wider commercial exposure has increased public awareness of the Maori culture, but has also resulted in several notable legal disputes. Between 1998 and 2006, Nati Toa attempted to trademark the haka ka mate to prevent its use by commercial organizations without their permission. In 2001, Danish toymaker Lego faced legal action by several Maori tribal groups fronted by lawyer Maui Solomon and members of the online discussion forum Aotearoa Cafe for trademarking Maori words used in naming the Bionicle product range see Bionicle Maori controversy. Topic. Political representation Maori have been involved in New Zealand politics since the Declaration of the Independence of New Zealand, before the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in 1840. Maori have had reserved seats in the New Zealand Parliament since 1868. Presently, this accounts for seven of the 122 seats in New Zealand's unicameral parliament. 
The contesting of these seats was the first opportunity for many Maori to participate in New Zealand elections, although the elected Maori representatives initially struggled to assert significant influence. Maori received universal suffrage with other New Zealand citizens in 1893. Being a traditionally tribal people, no one organization ostensibly speaks for all Maori nationwide. The Maori King movement originated in the 1860s as an attempt by several IWI to unify under one leader. In modern times, it serves a largely ceremonial role. Another attempt at political unity was the Kotahitanga movement, which established a separate Maori parliament that held annual sessions from 1892 until its last sitting in 1902. There are seven designated Maori seats in the New Zealand parliament, and Maori can and do stand in and win general role seats, and consideration of and consultation with Maori have become routine requirements for councils and government organisations. Debate occurs frequently as to the relevance and legitimacy of the Maori electoral role and seats. The National Party announced in 2008 it would abolish the seats when all historic treaty settlements have been resolved, which it aimed to complete by 2014. However, after the election National reached an agreement with the Maori Party not to abolish the seats until Maori give their approval. Several Maori political parties have formed over the years to improve the position of Maori in New Zealand society. The present Maori Party, formed in 2004, secured 1.32% of the party vote at the 2014 general election and held two seats in the 51st New Zealand Parliament, with two MPs serving as ministers outside cabinet. The party did not achieve any representatives in the 52nd New Zealand Parliament. Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Topic. Further reading Ballara, Angela IWI, The Dynamics of Maori Tribal Organization from c. 1769 to c. 1945. Wellington, Victoria University Press. ISBN 0-86473-328-3. Biggs, Bruce 1994. Does Maori Have a Closest Relative? In Sutton, ed. 1994, pp. 96-105. Gagne, Natasha. Being Maori in the City, Indigenous Everyday Life in Auckland University of Toronto Press, 2013 368 pages. Hiroa, Te Rangi Sir Peter Buck 1974. The Coming of the Maori. Second edition. First published 1949. Wellington, Whitcomb and Tombs. Irwin, Jeffrey The Prehistoric Exploration and Colonization of the Pacific. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. McLean, Mervyn Maori Music. Auckland, Auckland University Press. Simmons, D. R. Ta Moko, The Art of Maori Tattoo. Revised edition. First published 1986. Auckland, Reed. Sutton, Douglas G. Ed. 1994. The Origins of the First New Zealanders. Auckland, Auckland University Press. ISBN 1-86940-098-4. Topic. External links. Entry on the Maori people in Te Era, the Encyclopedia of New Zealand Maori people at Curlie